hasn't closed the gap though. Boom! Shaka laka waka! What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and I'm going to be 100% honest with you lads. I have never struggled with the gameplay in eFootball as I am right now. Which has meant I've had to find my new meta. And I think that this is the new meta for where the gameplay is at at the moment. And I think that if you can master this, you can absolutely destroy top ranked players. Like I mean completely take their game away from them with a, like a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. You're, you're blending possession, you're blending dribbling, and you're blending out wide play while still having the, the kind of meta which is through the middle. Now, as I said, I've struggled a lot in this game, right? In the last couple of days with the new update. But I always go back to my out wide kind of style. And I've won nine games and drawn one in my last 10, right? And you're going to score worldies like this Latan Ibrahimovic collar style goal as collar can only do. But it's more about control in the play. Now, you might look at this and say, Barry, you're talking absolute grade one shite. All the top ranks are still using, you know, the normal meta, Sauke, Alonso, the Champs any of these guys, right? Yes, you're always going to have this meta working, lads. It doesn't matter how many times they change the gameplay, the meta will always be working as a 4-1-3-2 or a 5 at the back or a 4-1-2-3. Any of these formations will always work. However, with the current gameplay at the moment, you can actually nullify a lot of the central play if you master out wide. And it's all about spacing. You will see here that the AI has never been as more aggressive in the central positions with the current gameplay at the moment. Now listen, if you're an unbelievable fast passer, meta style player that can play the meta with Alonso or the Champs, you can still play this, right? But you saw in that clip there, we beat a top 277 ranked guy. In those clips that you saw there, I think it was 4-0 or 3-0 and a tap out. And we were just creating so many chances out wide. You're not gonna score from them all the time. It's not about scoring and having it, right? The current meta is still always going to be the old school meta for the last three years. Central play, bombarding midfield, and then turning over on counter-attack. This is a more controlled meta that you can actually learn and improve upon. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to get caught at the back. There is a lot of weaknesses to it. But I guarantee it will improve you as a player. And if you get on top of somebody that's not used to actually defending against this out-wide style build-up and this out-wide play style and out-wide kind of like chance creation... You can dominate players. Honestly, you can dominate players, lads. With a little bit of practice, you simply can just kind of take everything that they're good at and make them play the game at your kind of pace, right? So we're going to start, obviously, with our manager and our formation. We're playing a three at the back, and we are going to be using De La Fuente in this, right? I've gone back to De La Fuente. He's my favorite manager to use. He just suits my play style. Give him a go. If you don't have him, you can buy a GP manager with the highest out wide that you possibly can have, or if you have one lying around... Now, there is a couple of weaknesses with out wide, lads. The first one is that the runs aren't as direct, so it takes a lot of getting used to it. If you've played long ball counter or quick counter, the runs are very seamless and they're very easy to track. And also, you are quite high up with out wide. You're, you're actually super high up. So you need to overcompensate with that and kind of like limit those issues and really kind of strengthen up with individual instructions. So you've got four individual instructions per attacking and defensive, right? We're going to focus on these ones at, this, at the moment, which is for our attackers. So you'll notice with our formation, which we'll get into in a second, we're going to have two out wide options. We have Gareth Bale hugging the left flank and Olise on the right. The players and the personnel that we have here are not really that important. The backs are, the DMF is, and our strikers are, but our midfielders are not really that important. Now we're going to put Ankren on whichever right midfielder or left midfielder, whichever out wide player that we want to kind of keep up with the ball so that he doesn't come central. We want to keep him out wide. For the defensive individual instruction here, we're going to put it on our destroyer center back in our back three. Now, you can apply this to a back four as well and literally just leave Olise where he is, take off Garrett Bale and have a left back if you want, and put defensive on your CB as well. But if you are playing a build up and you're not playing destroyers, you can still put defensive on one of your build up, but I do think that it's not as important unless you're playing destroyers. So that's something that you can kind of be 50-50 on. For me, Cannavaro is going to be my destroyer in this back three. So I'm going to throw defensive on him. And then for counter target. So I get this asked a lot, right? Will you put counter target on your out wide players? Sometimes I do, depending if I want to actually target my opponent's left or right back. Usually their players' right backs are more defensive, right? But for a counter target... I get asked this the whole time. If I'm playing two strikers, which one do I put it on, right? I would always say that if you're playing a deep line forward, don't interfere with their, players, their player ID or their play style, especially Messi. Let Messi do whatever he wants. 
you're going to want your goal poacher or your fox in the box. You're going to want them to just keep up and make their runs. Once Samuel Leto gets to a certain position because he's a goal poacher, he's going to override his runs with just his play style and his player ID anyway. Now, the last but not least, but it's probably the most important position on your squad when you're playing a back three is to play a deep line. Okay, now a deep line is going to mean essentially that when you are not controlling Patrick Vieira, which we won't be doing a lot of the time if we're playing meta, we're going to let Ambrosini be our manual defender. We want Vieira tucking in like this with the AI controlling him and making the line. Listen, I don't like that the AI does so much for you, but obviously that is what happens when you do use a deep line, okay? And that's why people do it the whole time. Now again, we're going to have what I call the 3-2 system here. With our attacking right midfielder, Olise, we're going to be compensating for defending with Ambrosini and Turan. And we're going to let Olise roam up the flank. On the left side, we're going to let Bale track back with Cannavaro and Vieira, who's our main defensive kind of like track back player. Two strikers can do what they want, and our attacking midfielder, we're using Guler because he's on A and we were testing him out. But essentially, from these clips that you will see here, it doesn't really matter what player gets the ball and what player gets the ball in different positions. You saw Sammy Leto, he gets it out wide, he cuts in. Olise, look at the option that we have here for a big, huge spread. He's got anchoring, he's staying out wide, he's not tracking in. Garrett Bale can get this ball again. Look at Olise on the far flank, lads. He's not tracking in until the last second when we're in a really advanced position. That should have been a goal. We don't get lucky. Again, on the counter-attack here. There's Olise. He's deep. Now Ambersini is making the run, right? Ambersini is going to make the run out wide. Now he understands that Olise is going to overlap him on the far side and Ambersini tucks in. Olise is not going to tuck in because he's got anchoring and he's staying out wide even when the play is developing, which means we have a huge option out here again and the opponent is literally chasing shadows, Okay. Again, Ambersini, manual touch and go, manual switch. It doesn't really make a difference. Bale is out left mid. Bale has got loads of room to roam and he can just run like he's in the, the Grand National, okay? So again, as I said, right, one other big test to this and one other big change to this is what centre backs you're going to use. I would always have a nice hybrid of different play style centre back. The Stryer is going to be more aggressive. They're kind of your chasing manual centre back. Defensive fullback is probably the best in the game at the moment. They're just kind of passive. They don't really be that much aggressive compared to destroyers. And then also build up and destroyers in DMF or CB are going to be very, very kind of like the same. They're going to be very defensive with their stats, but they're going to be a little bit less uh, or more aggressive than defensive fullbacks. Now, the one question I will get as well is right card versus Vieira. There's a new Vieira coming out, obviously. And that's going to be a bit of a bit of a test to see how he handles as an anchorman. It doesn't really matter who you have here as a destroyer. You can have destroyer, you can have box to box, you can have whatever, and the same out wide. The last thing I will say is, right, one of the biggest things I always notice when I come up against high rank players, when they see that you're playing out wide and they're getting cute to what you're doing by switches and stuff like that, they will man mark your out wide players or they will tight mark your out wide players. This is where sub tactics come in, right? So I'm going to show you a secondary build up here that we're going to activate sub tactic. And this is kind of like a hidden tip for people that are new to the game. Or also, it's not, it might be something that you just don't really use. We're going to activate sub tactic by holding down on the D-pad during a match. And we're going to alternate by dragging our opponent's AI all over the place, like genuinely all over the place, right? And I'm going to show you the variance that we have here, or the variety that we have here, depending on the players that you want to use. And this is where alternative or uh, secondary positions can come into it. So, you know, Elisa can play left mid, right mid, left wing, right wing, center forward, wherever you want to play. Messi, AMF, you can switch. And that just does come with having the players that can play a lot of utility roles, okay? But I'll show you that sub tactic there. That is it for me. Try this out, lads. Let me know what you guys think. And I guarantee you, it will improve you as a player. The game is so crazy at the moment right now. I definitely think you can have a lot of fun with this. And if you want to use a target man, use somebody that can win headers. You know, bullet header or collar or somebody that can win aerial battles as well. But what you do with this is you're streamlining your attacks and creating the space out wide while still being very compact with a block of six in midfield and, and, and center backs. And then also you're going to have your sub tactic to have a completely different uh, build up, completely different style, completely different pattern of play and creative chances that you, can uh, that you can open up. So let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe.